Mr. Museveni actually acknowledges that, he, though he keeps saying that what is now remaining is dealing with household poverty, but that is the very thing that is the most important. The situation of people he says we have now sort of this, we are now going to deal with the household poverty. At independence, the independence leaders of Africa, the whole of Africa, their vision was very focused on three things. Dealing with ignorance, disease, and poverty. Three things the independence leaders were focused because those are things that bedevil the people themselves. Ignorance, poverty, and disease. And they designed programs to attack these. That is not in the vision, at least not in the achievements that are being talked about. How we have gone in dealing with ignorance, with the poverty, with the disease. So, the celebrations, the propaganda is totally misleading. Of course, the other thing they endlessly celebrate is security ushered in by the NRA. Because again, they think that security and peace is the absence, is purely the absence of war. That's what they equate security and peace. They don't know that you can't move in this town holding your phone. Your hand may be cut off. They don't know how insecure people feel in their homes about their property. I told you some time back, I was in the village. People now sleep with their goats because they fear their goats will not be there by morning. They sleep in the coffee chambers, guarding. You know? I myself am a victim here in Kasanga. Whenever I grow some days, I, I literally have to sleep there. Eat a bit of it. You know? The insecurity and the people who are moving around, grabbing whatever, have been pushed completely to the margins. They have no means of subsistence, so they have to now uh, become wild. It is a creation of what they are, they are celebrating. Because what they are celebrating is what has been extracted from everybody else. The people celebrating, you can count them on your hands. The rest of the people, very sad for them. I felt very sad when I saw the rain harassing them at the celebration of Corona. The ones who come from the you know, the rain was not kind to them this time. But they, they have no food. So if you make a party at Kororo and you, you make plow or there is some sort of people will come to, to, to share in that. But they are not sharing in the prosperity. They are demonstrating their marginalization only. They are not part of the celebration. So, if you look at poverty, which, which is where the country must be concerned, that our young people who have no jobs, no hope, nothing, are impoverished, our young people. 
who are indeed running away at great risk to go to Arab countries, to go to other places to look for survival. That is what any government worth its name should be focusing on. Not telling us, showing us pictures of Entebbe Expressway built at a cost that would have built maybe 10 of those. And all the rest of the money is in the pockets of these thieves who masquerade as leaders of our country. So, poverty up to now, officially, and this is officially, I don't consider that official figures in Uganda mean much, because our statistics, as you know, are very corrupted, like the rest of the things. You saw the census the other day, which is what we are going to get figures from, the census household surveys which was going on fake so it's very difficult to have real figures of the situation in our country but nonetheless officially at least they still say 30 percent of ugandans are below the poverty line that's official the line they talk about, even those above it are poor. So the line has been put very low, actually. But look, and they say that those above it, the greatest majority are vulnerable to going below. If there is any slight shock, then immediately they plunge below. That is the real situation that uh, our country should be. Education, I don't, education is a crisis for our country, both in terms of the content of education, but more especially the delivery of education services. Less than 25% of school going people finish elementary school, primary school. Less than 25% finish primary school. Less than 16% finish lower secondary education. Ordinary level. And lower than 6% finish advanced higher in secondary education. That is our situation. So we are in That's the reality that we are in today. And of course, if there is anything called apathy, education in Uganda is one that demonstrates the policy of apathy separate development. Those who are in UPE are in a completely different trajectory of development. Those in private schools and private schools also have classes are on a different trajectory of development. And then there are those in international schools. So there are three separate Paths of development for our people. UPE, those are like in the condemned section. And that's why they abandon it. Many don't go up now to continue. Then you have the private school, which squeezes the parents. Part of the poverty we are talking about is caused by attempting to educate children in the homes, in the poverty. Selling land, selling what, selling what, to educate them. 
I told the people of Mbarara that if Museveni became a child today, he would never go to that school where he went. He would never. He would remain there in the village with his shoes. Never go to school. Under the system he has created, he would never have bought an education coming from the family in which he came. Those are the things that should be focused on by the country, not the GDP. Where is the GDP in all of this? Why doesn't it produce education? Why doesn't it pay TV at all for teachers? Everybody despises a teacher. If you see a country where teachers are despised, you know that country is doomed. And that's what we have today. Teacher training. If you go to teacher training institutions, shameful. So again, just putting the context of their celebrations. Yes, they are celebrating, but they are dancing on our graves. They must understand. A child in UPE, we have talked about this very many times. A child in UPE in the city gets a capitation payment of money from government of 10,000 for a year to educate a child. In the villages it is 7,000. Two dollars to educate our children for a year. And you are in Corona celebrating killing the children of Uganda. So that is poverty, ignorance. What about disease? Health, health care. Africa as a whole realized that health care is critical. They made the Abuja declaration. African country should at least minimum spend percent of their budget on health. Minimum 15 percent so far hit that target at some point. That is South Africa and Cape Verde. The rest of the Africans wallowing in terrible health care situation. In Uganda, we don't have anything called the health care system at all. We don't. None of you media people has a health care file somewhere in our health care system. A file that follows your health. To know when you need, if you are a lady, when you need a pap smear, and they invite you, it's your time to do a pap smear. It's your time to do a mammogram, to check your breast to see whether it's all right. It's your time to do a test for your prostate. It's your time to take this immunization because there is somebody following your health. Health care is not about treating the sick. Health care is to ensure people remain healthy. We don't have anything like that in this country. Zero. The only children under five, that's where health parameters are critical because they follow you through life. Children under five, only 32 percent, and I told you these percentages are also fake. Definitely much less, I believe. But the official record is that only 32 percent of children under five were registered at birth. 
In other words, the greatest majority of children in Uganda are not known by the state, actually. They are not in the, they were not born in the health care system. They are not known. They are born on the, on the road, in the home, and not, they, are not, they are not known. That is, only 32 percent of are registered. That's where health care starts. So no doubt, we still have high infant deaths, high young children, neonatal deaths, of course maternal deaths are still very problematic. Mothers who die in childbirth. Totally needless. Developed countries will generally have less than five deaths of every 100,000 deaths. But we have less than five. We are still in the hundreds ourselves. <laughs> These are the matters on which they should account. Why should our women still be dying? Not talking about factories. Whose factories are you talking about? Chinese, instead of making the things in China, they are making them here. All right. So maybe you may get a little more tax fine. But where does the tax go?